Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and happy Super Bowl Sunday. This is the Two Old Farts coming at you. My name is Chuck. I'm Lou. I'm better looking at the Two Old Farts. Okay. You say gonna, so. Are we going to start that argument? Nope. I, I, I let you think what you want to think. You do uh, you. I'll do me. <laughs> it's a good, good, way to, good way to start everything off, right? Absolutely. Let the old let the old fart think what he wants to think. There you go. Be that smiling old fart that forgets where the hell he's going. You, yesterday, your mom and I, Braylon plays on Saturday. She's in a, a youth league on the volleyball. It's Aubrey's daughter, right? And they play off of Vance Jackson, just right behind uh, 755 Mile Whataburger there, right? Just right up the street there. <laughs> so usually I just go down Claybrook 410, right? So which way did I go yesterday? 1604. Then it dawns on me. I think you're going the wrong direction. I think you oh, need to. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Are you losing <laughs> your damn mind, old man? <laughs> so that was your mom's fault. She got me distracted. I can blame I can blame it on her. She's not around. Why? She blames you for every other thing else. So if <laughs> something else fails, like, see what you made me do? <laughs> anyway. Well, how's the game going to go today? Oh, man. You know, I, I thought back when it was Alabama against Michigan, I thought it was going to go our way. I thought we had the far superior team, you know, given the statistics of the teams played. You know, the big signature win for Ohio State was Penn State on the road. And then Penn State played, was it Ole Miss? Yep. And they got beat pretty bad in that bowl game. So then you're thinking, well, shoot, man, we beat the tar out of Ole Miss. That was probably our signature win in the SEC. And, like, if they can beat them and we beat them, like, we should be able to handle Michigan. But, my God, that was a defense like we have never seen. And yeah. we were just outcoached. But uh, right. so going yeah, away. Yeah, I got outcoached. So back to your original question about how I think it's going to go today. Vegas has it at what one and a half points? Yeah, two points. To the 49ers' like favor, which means it's really a 50-50 toss-up when you really get down to it. It could go either way. I mean, it. Neither team is gonna have if they have a turnover or something. It's it's over. Yeah, they talked about I Mahomes agree. hasn't thrown any interceptions in the last five or six games. Well, shoot. Yeah. What happens if he throws an interception? Yeah, I think special you know, team. Is it probably may be the difference in this ball game? I'm, I'm thinking three, three to seven points different either way. Uh, I think it's going to be a three point or less difference. I think the, I think the Chiefs are a little bit better. I don't know. I just you know, but defensively, I think the 49ers are, are up. So I'm not sure how Brock Purdy is going to handle the big stage. Uh, yeah, and see that that's a positive for the Chiefs. You know, you've got all of that chemistry. You've got, what, three Super Bowls in the last, what, five years? Appearances mm -hmm. with uh, the Chiefs. You know, you, you look at Kelsey and Mahomes, man, that's like Brady and Gronk, you know? Yep. Yep. So, that's going to be a good game. Uh, we get started, so, what's your I got, prediction? I, I'm taking the Chiefs three points. I'm saying like okay. 21, 17, four points or, or somewhere like that. I don't think it's going to be a wild scoring ball game. I think the defenses on both sides will step up. I I think San Francisco defense to me is a little bit stronger. But I think so too. This is this is a big game. I think the Chiefs offense are a little bit stronger than simply because of the experience. Uh, I like Black Party, but they got a running back who's been there before. Uh, and and they well, they got a lot of players have been there before the San Francisco has, and uh, so I think it's going to be a good game. I I think so too. Um, I think it's going to be probably twenty three twenty four or maybe twenty to twenty three, because I, I think the over under is forty four forty five forty six points. So it's yeah. going to get into the twenty. So I think each team is going to have at least. Three touchdowns. Right. I mean, because it's just such a pass-intensive league right now. 
Yeah, and it, it's, it's used to back in the day, the game was was what you talked about all the time. But nowadays, people talk about commercials. They're interested in the commercials and and who the, the entertainers are and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, the halftime, the halftime entertainment, and the commercials. Yeah, that's big business. You know, and, and I think and I think that's good for the sport because it attracts as wide of an audience as can be. It's no longer just for the guys who grew up either playing or watching or both of football and competitive sports in general. Um, it's it's for everybody now. Uh, like you said, the, the, the halftime entertainment is huge. Uh, the commercials are just out of this world, and everybody talks about it on Monday morning the best commercials, the worst commercials. It's, you know, that water cooler talk, if you will. Oh, yeah. And Monday will be probably the highest day of the year for call-outs for, <laughs> for the whole year. People hung oh, over yeah. and calling out tomorrow and, and stuff like that. So, And this, these commercials are out of sight. I've got some notes here in a few minutes. We'll go over $7 million for a 60-second ad. Of course, that's what it was last year, too, $7 million. But that's, okay. that's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's funny that you mentioned, you know, calling calling in sick or, you know, coming in late or whatever. Um, being overseas when I was in the military, the game would, if you're, you know, you're in Europe, the game doesn't come on until almost midnight, if you will. Right. So the game doesn't end until like 4, 4.30 in the morning. So usually... um. The commanding general in of the you know the forces in Europe would uh, allow you know people to come in at noon, if you will, yeah. so they could watch. Usually, it was like that for the World Series, um, the Super Bowl, that kind of stuff. Yeah, they um, used to, you know, but not just all seven games. It would usually be you know when it's three three, they would you know the final game kind of a thing. Yeah. And this same thing with the NBA. I don't know if they'll do it this time, but usually they they cut it cut in a lot to a lot of those uh, units serving overseas and do some interviews. I think that's pretty good. I, I like that. That's it's a positive thing. You know, and and you just touched on something that just reminded me. Uh, this past week, uh, we lost Toby Keith. Uh, it's, you may or may not be a country music fan. However, he was a big fan and proponent of the military, and he went a lot to visit the troops in Iraq and Afghanistan and gave concerts. Yes, and, he did. Yeah, and, um, so hats off to him and uh, uh, condolences to his family for the loss. Um, he, he was a huge icon, and most people don't know this, and we can use this as a segue back into the NFL. He is solely responsible for Taylor Swift getting her start in music. Yes. He signed her to his label. Yeah, and he, you know, he was a his head of his time in some ways. He he could, he uh, started his own label, his own recording company, because he didn't like mm -hmm. the way things were done. I mean, he was his own person. So you got to. It was. Give, it was his own man. You got to. You got to give him credit for the things he's done, what he's achieved, and and for the battle he fought. Uh, yes, sixty-two, something like that. Right. Yes, so such a young man. Yep, uh, from Oklahoma, right? Yes. Yeah. So it is, it was sad. Uh, I've been listening to, uh, on the country radio station, channel fifty eight on Sirius XM all week. They've been uh, tribute to him. I thought that was pretty damn nice. Uh, playing all of his songs and they had people on interviewing. That known him all his life, and and fans who've gone to his games and uh, his uh, concerts and stuff like that, and watch him. I, I think that's where it should be. When yeah, huge loss. Yeah, but you know, back to Taylor Swift, back to Travis Kelsey, back to the Chiefs. You know, and that's another aspect. Um, a lot of people are um, against it. They don't like it. They don't want to hear about it. Is all the talk about Taylor Swift and. Travis Kelsey, I I could give a shit less who he or she dates. If she's in the in the box, you know, watching her boyfriend play, who cares? Really, you know, who cares? Absolutely, but you know what? It's good for the game because you know what? Ultimately, I think so too. 
you know, she's a billionaire. She, it's not going to make not any quite. difference. She's yeah. a billionaire, but she's her getting close. Is, her net worth is just a little over a billion dollars. Her net Let worth. Let me look at this. Yeah. But it, it's. Oh, you're right. 1.1 billion. I yeah. apologize. You are correct. Uh, but, it, you know, it, it's good for the game because it attracts more people to the game. It's, it's all about entertainment. You know, it's about the performers. It's about the commercials. It's about the games. And and I like I like Kelsey. He is I not, do too. From what I can, what I can see, I know they interviewed him, and he and his comment was, he said, "Once I step on the field, one thing I think about, and that's the game." <laughs> and and, I, and it shows. You look at his performance. There's been no drop off. You go back to when Tony Romo was dating, uh, God, what was her name, the singer. He, there was a just, there was a drop off in his performance, and it was all of that hype about the two of them. Yeah. So, who is the top ten performers of all time at the Super Bowl? Yeah, Dad, don't ask me. <laughs> I I don't I don't know. Number number, number ten in twenty thirteen, Destiny's Child reunion. Okay. Number nine, twenty twenty two. Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Murray J. Blige, Kamar Hendricks, Kendrick Lamar, and Fitz Cent. Then number eight, Michael Jackson in 93. Ooh, 2015, Left Shark. And I have no idea who Left Shark is. Okay. Katy Perry, then Rihanna in 2023. And she was pregnant, right? And then Lady Gaga in 2017. You two, uh, honor 9 11 victims. Victims in 2002. Uh, that was number four. Indiana Jones performance by Patti LaBelle, Tony Bennett, blah, blah, blah. And Dinah Ross in uh, 1996. She left in a helicopter. Then Janet Jackson, her wardrobe mishap in 2004. All right. Pretty neat. It is pretty cool. <laughs> so I got, I got all my notes here. If I, don't That's copy, if I don't copy and paste and, and print it out, I'll forget them. I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I've got to write things down. Um, just just got to get your mind and your thoughts fresh. Otherwise, you lose your train of thought. Yeah. You know, you, a few minutes ago, I talked about the expensive commercial. I'm going to share with you some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number 13, 90 seconds, $11.9 million in 2018. And I'm going to give you a comparison in a few minutes. Number 12, 2014, 12 million. The Bud Light, Bud Light commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, number 11, Chrysler, 200, uh, 120 seconds, 12.4 million in 2011. Then number 10, 90 seconds, 14.4 million in 2016, the Toyota Prius commercial. Then uh, number five was Budweiser's Bud Ice Penguin in 96. And number four, uh, Bush Classic. Number three, the in 93, Michael Jordan, Bugs Bunny, and Nike is here, Jordan type thing. Uh, oh, the Air Jordan, yeah. Yeah, and then Ridley Scott in, in 84 is Apple. Then in 1980, Coca Cola's Hey Kids, Hey Kid Catch, Mean Joe Green. Oh, I love that commercial. Let me show you how things have changed. I understand the, the dollar value has changed, too. The most expensive Super Bowl commercial was between the time between Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant commercials, $16.8 million in 2020, okay? Mm -hmm. In 1967, the 30-second commercial cost $37,500. That was a lot of money back then. In 1981, it's 275,000. 80, 222,000. 79, 185, and then 70, 162,000 dollars. So when, when was the first million dollar commercial? It was the first million dollar commercial? Yeah. Bud Light. That was? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Um, uh, it wasn't until 1995 that the average unit cost hit $1 million. And that was for Super Bowl 29. 
Let me see. Yeah, it doesn't really say which commercial. Yeah. Let me look and say when, what was the first million dollar commercial in the Super Bowl? Well, there's one thing I'm looking at the, the tie for number one commercials is uh, Google Assistant, the one about Loretta, 90 seconds, 16.8 million. Mm -hmm. And uh, also before Alexa, 90 seconds, 16.8 million. And the Super Bowl uh, 54, you know, what people thought about Alexa and stuff like that. Yeah. It was about a tearjerker showed an elderly man using Google Assistant to assemble members of his late wife. Interesting. I, I can't. I can't find, you know, the first million dollar commercial. So, hey, fans, um, listeners, if you got it, post it on the socials if, if if you don't mind. You know who the the top ten most watched commercial super uh, commercials have been, or, or entertainers? Not commercial, but you entertainers. Just read, you just read the the most. No entertainers. You, yeah. You were talking mm -hmm. about Rihanna and Eminem and Snoop Dogg and all Jennifer, those guys. Jennifer, Lo Jennifer Lopez and, and Sh Shakira. Shakira. Super Bowl, Shakira and uh, Super Bowl uh, 54, 104.1 million viewers. Wow. That's impressive. And Justin Timberlake, number nine, and uh, Super Bowl 52, 106.6 .6 million. Then number eight, Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> 110 million. Then Beyonce and Super Bowl. Uh, or Beyonce. Beyonce. I forgot now how many million she had. Then Madonna. She had 114 million. Wow. Bruno Mars. Oh, man. I, I, I love that that performance of Bruno Mars. Yep. I, yeah, he had 114 million, something like that. Uh, Coldplay, 115 million. Lady Gaga, 118 million viewers. Wow. Then you got Katy Perry, 121 million. That's just incredible. And then you had Rihanna. Uh, I didn't show how many million she had, but. And that, that goes to the point I was making earlier. Three things about the Super Bowl. One is the game. Back in the day, it was the game. Now I'm not right. sure which is which is more important, the commercials or the entertaining. You know, but I, I think that depends on the audience. Who in the audience is watching is is they're doing it for different reasons. And I, and I think that's that's good for the game. Like we said earlier, you know, you're attracting so many different people to the game. Right. And you're expanding it. Otherwise, they can't pay out all these hundred million dollar salaries. Or two hundred million dollars salaries to these players, right? Well, that that also comes through with the the TV ad revenue throughout the year, ticket sales, merchandise, licensing, all of that type of stuff. It's a very competitive market and lucrative, but not as lucrative as probably baseball or even uh, soccer. Oh yeah, and soccer, I'm not. That's much a global a, sport. It is. And there is so much money. It's probably the, the most expensive game, money-wise, or almost that expensive, but money-making. Lucrative? Yeah. You know, I was going to say lucrative. Uh, so, I, I know that you know, your sister Tina and Jordan, they're big soccer fans. They went to uh, a game at the Soccer Stadium here in San Antonio is a, kind of like they had all the players come. It's kind of like a practice game. But I don't know exactly what they call it. An exhibition Wasn't, game or something? Yeah. And it was sold out. Oh, the stadium. And people were standing in line to get in. And it was, it was just a like a preseason type game type thing. You know, and, I truly believe soccer will be the sport that breaks through um, in San Antonio as a major sports team to come here. I don't think it's not yeah. going to be baseball. It's not going to be football. I, I think it's going to be major league soccer. And they, and their soccer games, because Jordan works at a, a lot of those soccer games. And they're, mm -hmm. they're pretty much sold out. All, or they have a huge crowd in every game. 
Yeah. Yep. Speaking of games, which are the 15 best Super Bowl games of all time? So, number 15 uh, is the Eagles and the Patriots in 2005. Okay. Then in 2020, Super Bowl 54, 49ers and the Chiefs. Then 13 is the Panthers and the Patriots in 2012. The Super Bowl 10, Steelers and the Cowboys in 76. Yep, I love. I mean, remember that game. Number eleven, Patriots and Ram in two thousand two. Super Bowl thirty six. Then number ten, Giants and Bills in ninety one. Okay. Then number nine, Super Bowl three, my favorite, the Jets and the Colts in nineteen sixty nine, when Joe Namath predicted we're going to win. That's my all time favorite. The number I'm surprised eight it's, it's, I'm surprised it's. As high as number nine. I, uh, me too. Then number eight was um, Steelers and Cardinals in 2009. Then the Eagles and Patriots in 2018. Then Patriots and Giants in 2012. And then number five. Oh, was, yes. That was a good one. Yep. Number five is the Rams and Bengals in 22. Patriots and Seahawks in 15. Rams and Titans in 2000. And number two, Giants and Patriots in 2000. And number one, and I don't really get this one other than the comeback, it was uh, Patriots and the Falcons in 27. That was the uh, highest. You know, score. It, I, find it, I find it incredibly difficult that the 49ers Bengals in Super Bowl, what was it, Super Bowl 16? That that they were down and and they came back. I I think it was. I just so happen to have those the biggest comebacks in NFL games. The, the biggest one is one I just just told you about. Yeah the 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 Forty Niners beat the Bengals twenty six yeah. to twenty one. Number one thirty three points for the Vikings and the Indianapolis Colts and uh, the Bills and uh, Oilers. In 92, 32 points. 2013, Chiefs and uh, Colts, 28 points. Uh, then Jaguars and the Chargers. Then 26 points was uh, Colts and the Bills. And then you had the Patriots and about 30, I forgot how many points now, 25 points for the Browns and the Titans and uh, Cardinals and, the, and Buccaneers. So it's pretty interesting. And the largest deficit to come back to overcome to a tie was 31 points with the Bills and the Broncos in 1960. It ended up in a tie, 38-38. Uh, and then in 1948, 28 points by the Eagles and the Rams. They ended up tying 28-28. It goes back to what you're saying today. It's probably going to be 21, 24 type ball game. Uh, I, I don't, I don't see any, I don't see either one of those teams putting up a lot of points and somebody having to come back. I don't think the defense is, I think the defense are too strong to have that kind of a ball game. Of course, you never know. So I was incorrect. It, yes, that was the Bengals, but it wasn't Super Bowl 16. Uh, it was Super Bowl twenty three, I believe. So, Joe Montana, who is arguably in in the conversation with uh, Brady as you know one of the best quarterbacks of all time, Joe Montana up until that point had orchestrated thirty one fourth quarter comebacks in his Hall of Fame career, yes. and one of them took place on January twenty second, nineteen eighty nine, as he lifted the Niners to a Super Bowl win. They were playing Cincinnati again for the second time. And for three quarters, uh, the Niners and Joe Montana were unable to get into the end zone. So after a 93-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by the Bengals, the 49ers trail 13-6. to So in the fourth quarter, that's when Joe Montana came alive. He, was, he threw a 14-yard touchdown pass to Jerry Rice to tie the game. And after a Bengals field goal, with them under, left them in 
excuse me, after a Bengals field goal, there was four minutes left on the clock. And the Niners got the ball back on their own eight. And and this is where, you know, clutch players come together and they settle down their team. And this is why they call Joe Montana Joe Cool. Yeah. So as they get back into the huddle, and they're at the eight yard line, they got to go ninety two yards to score a touchdown. He he made a funny joke. Yes, he did. So he yeah. made in three minutes. He completed eight and nine passes, three of them to Rice and three to Roger Craig, and the last of which was a ten yard touchdown to John Taylor. But it was at that point when they were in the um, huddle at the beginning of that drive. He just typically, he just in his typical calm manner went, "Isn't that John Candy?" Because he saw him, <laughs> he saw him in at the, you know, sitting there on the side, and he's like, "It's you know, it is just such a surreal moment." You know, you're in the Super Bowl, you're down, and you've got to do the whole length of the field virtually to pull ahead, and you got to score a touchdown, not just a field goal. And then you're just so casually like, isn't that John Candy? Uh, that is, to me, that's probably the greatest Super Bowl and Super Bowl moment. To have that kind of composure and, and what a way to settle your team down, you know, to get rid of those nerves. It, it, it just kind of brings it back down to the basics. Yep. And that's the difference between great quarterbacks and really great quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, Joe Montana. He was one of the best, if not the best. Uh, in the forty nine, sometimes it isn't that, just about the rings. Sometimes no, it's not. Usually, usually it's it's it's, it's going to be fun, and I'll, I'll enjoy watching it. And when you think about the forty nine, it brings back good memories of your aunt Bertie. Yep, sure it does. Yeah, and, so. and the heyday, glory days of the of the forty nineers, and it's taken a long time for them to get back to this point again. Yes, and one of the reasons I think is is there uh, is John Lynch. Uh, yes, uh, I I just really like that guy. I, I think he's you don't hear much out of him, but he is he's turned that since he's been there in charge of operation. He's turned that that club around. That's true, and that's why today I I, don't, I like the Chiefs. Because uh, I like Andy Reid, and I think a lot of it goes back to us when we were in Japan, and, and our team, the Chiefs, won that won our Super Bowl over there. So that's one of the reasons I, I really like the Chiefs. So, but uh, I kind of rooting for both teams today. So it it <laughs> it'd be fun because I like the Forty ers and I like the Chiefs. Yeah, but we we got to avenge ourselves. You know, we went in 2013 and lost to the Ravens. And then, you know, just a couple of years ago, we lost to the Chiefs. You know, and yeah, it wasn't so, even close, really. 31-20 was not close. No. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun. It's going to be a good game. And uh, I hope everybody has a good time and don't do anything dumb and go out and get in trouble. Uh, exactly. Yeah, you know, so so we're we're wrapping up at that thirty minute mark. Um, I just wanted to kind of close it out with some numbers for you because you usually ask. Um, we're at thirty two, thirty nine um, all time downloads so far. February is looking pretty good. Um, an uptick over January. So this month we've had thirty five total downloads this month, and you know we're at eleven days in. So that's on par for us, about three a day. Um, we've had one from Canada, but it wasn't from Ontario, believe it or not. It oh, was really? from British Columbia. Um, in the U.S., Texas is leading with 12 downloads. Right behind them is Kansas with seven, Alabama six, Florida three, Illinois two, Alaska one. Yes, okay. one from Alaska. One from Oklahoma, one from Pennsylvania, and one from Virginia. We still have yet to crack West Virginia. I think we've hit just about every state but West Virginia. Yeah. Well, I guess we're going to have to get out there and bore some West Virginia. I guess so. <laughs> well, we, we give a shout out to your Aunt Carolyn and uh, to your daughters uh, in Washington. And uh, 
Idaho. Idaho. And and at Texas State, Texas like on State. your sweatshirt. See that Texas State? All right. I see it. And so over well, thank you all it. again for listening. Um, thank you all for tuning in on this uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Um, I hope my 49ers win. If you're, it's your Chiefs, you know, good luck to you. Um, if neither one of these teams are your cup of tea, um, we hope you watch and, and enjoy, you know, the spectacle. Absolutely. The commercials are going to be good. Entertainment's going to be good. Uh, it, it's shaping up to be a fun day. I agree. All right, everybody, y'all take care. Love you, son. Love you have Dad. a good day. Thanks, you too. All, All right, right, bye. Bye.